There's my countdown. Wonderful. Glad you're here. So happy you can join us. Again, we have several cameras set up. That's why we always have to take a second to get everything set up. So I'm glad you're with us. Um, what we do today, if you're first time joining us, uh, I'm going to talk for 24 minutes. You, whatever platform you're on, can answer any question, ask any questions you might have. Just type it in your platform. I'll then talk for another 24 minutes, and then we're going to take another break and answer more questions. So do me a favor. Uh, type in where you're from. I always like to see that. So type in uh, where you're from, and if you're live, put in hashtag live. If you're listening on a replay, put in hashtag replay. Uh, right now is Monday, April 8th, 2024 at 1 o'clock Eastern time. So if it's not Monday, April 8th for you at 1 o'clock, please put in hashtag replay. So put in where you're from. I like to see that. Uh, it's always kind of fun. And share this if you would. This is really important. I give you all this information. I'm happy to do it for you. It's my gift to you. But I do ask for something in return. I want you to follow me on all platforms. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, our business Facebook page is down right now. It should be up in a couple of days, uh, but it's at Dr. Joe Esposito. So follow me on all platforms, LinkedIn, uh, and I appreciate that because the more followers we get, the more we get to spread this word because it's really important, and I assume you're here uh, because you want this information. So share it with all your friends, uh, and I guess we're pretty much ready to go whenever you guys are. Okay, here we go. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am glad you're with us today. We're going to talk today about how to spot dangerous food. Why is our food supply so poison? And I've been in practice a long time, and I've been around for a long time, and I see people coming in, and I'm seeing so many young people getting sick. In fact, I'm going to do a show on that maybe next week or the week after on why are young people so sick, and it's not a secret. We know why, and why life expectancy is actually dropping for the younger generation, first time in the history of humanity that we know of that life expectancy is less than it was for their parents. So we've got a real serious issue going on here. Nobody seems to be talking about it, um, and you need to know. Because the nice part is you can avoid all of this. You don't have to be part of this, this little silly game that's going on. Uh, we have serious issues with our food supply. It's, it's not a secret. I don't think that anyone can say that, oh, our food supply is wonderful and it's great. It's safe, doesn't kill you right away, but there are things we can do to make it better. Now, a lot of evidence reveals toxicity levels in food are rising, and it's from conventional agriculture. And not only is it affecting you, but it's affecting the environment. It's affecting pollution. Um, that's not what I talk about a lot of, but it is, is part of it. Um, you know, we talk about uh, gases. You know, we've oh, we got to worry about the gases in, in, in the environment, and we have to be careful about global warming. The number one contributor is not industry necessarily. It's uh, animal production. Animal production, the, the, the killing it, the freezing it, the shipping it, um, that's a big player. And so might be another reason you might want to consider altering somewhat your diet. Now, I'm not asking you to change everything. Don't get nervous. People freak out. I can't do all of that. That's okay. Every little baby step you take is going to be for the betterment for you. And you're going to save a ton of money too. Now, toxicity in food is several sources. It accumulates during the growth phase. In fact, uh, I was at my radio station the other day, and one of my friends who's the engineer there came in. He said, I have a, a question about bananas. And I thought, okay. He says, what's the difference between organic and non-organic? Because you're peeling the skin and throwing it away anyway, so who cares if there's pesticides on it? I said, it's the soil. The soil that we grow it in it doesn't have as much nutrients in it, and that's why organic fruits and vegetables usually have higher levels of nutrients. He says, oh, I never thought about that. I always think about just spraying it on the food and just wash it off or peel, peel, peel the skin. And he said, good point, Doc. That's why I ask you questions. So it could be from harvesting, processing, uh, manufacturing, and then also when we break down and we process the food into uh, many times junk food. So you might have, I don't know, something that might be healthy, peas, I don't know, for example, but then we mix it in with macaroni and cheese or something like that. So uh, it's not just the food itself. Several layers, along, several places along the way, it can get uh, toxicity. The greatest concern, of course, is the processed foods. But even whole foods, plant and animal foods, uh, can be contaminated. So don't think just because it's a whole food. And whole food, not the store, whole foods are closest to nature as it can be. So I pick an apple. It's how it came out of nature. I make applesauce. It's processed. I make apple pie more processed. I make apple chewy uh, leather, candy leather by adding sugar and high fructose corn syrup, more processed. So it's a level of processing. And every time we take another step, it usually makes the problem worse. So one of the things we have to worry about is the fertilizer that we use. 
And one of the fertilizers that's very commonly used is called phosphate fertilizers. Up to 90% of phosphorus is lost in the, in the supply chain, and losses are poorly documented. And so uh, we got to look at we using phosphate as a fertilizer. It doesn't have to be that way. Now, in conventional farming, it's cheap, and we just keep throwing phosphate into the soil, but we don't have to do that. The soil can grow healthy products as long as the soil is taken care of. It takes a little more work, but it's well worth it. And this is why I try to eat as much organic as possible. And I don't eat everything organic. It's not really practical to eat everything organic. But my rule is this. If I'm going to eat the skin, I want to make sure it's organic. So potatoes, onions, of course, they grow underground, uh, apples. If I'm going to eat the skin, it has to be organic, no exceptions. If I'm not going to eat the skin, bananas, for example, avocados, uh, I wash it with soap and water. Take my dish soap, squirt it with dish soap, get my, dish, my, my sponge, and scrub it down. This way we're washing away the pesticides, but also any viruses, germs, bacteria that might be on the skin – if we cut into it, can drive it into the food. So that's a good general rule to follow, and it's just a little easier because sometimes it's hard to get, I don't know, organic bananas, organic avocados. It's not that hard. But those are some simple rules that you can consider. Try to make it as easy as possible. Most people are very fine with it. Some people just so I can't do that. Well, then what can you do? Can you just give up artificial sweetener? I can give, do that. Okay, let's start there. Can you maybe have meat? One meal a day instead of three meals a day? Okay, all right, let's do that. So there's little steps that we can make, but our food supply really is, is going down to tubes, and it's scary. A lot of evidence out there that we don't need synthetic fertilizers to grow food, provided the soil is nurtured properly, and it's called biodynamic and regenerative farming. And that kind of goes to the uh, concept of organic. Now, the good news is we're seeing more biodynamic foods. We're seeing foods grown in, um, not in soil, actually, you can grow in biodynamic farms, and this way you don't have to use pesticides at all because it's enclosed areas. So we're seeing changes and, and trends coming along. The key really is stay away from those processed foods, you know, those alcohols, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweeteners, chips. I don't know how old you are, but when I was young, grocery stores were a lot smaller. You ever go to foreign countries? Grocery stores are really small. You don't have these big monster mega stores uh, that, that, like you see here in America. Because most of the stuff that we sell in the United States, a majority of it, I should say, is not available in places like Europe. They don't allow genetically modified foods in many places. They don't allow high fructose corn syrup in many places. They don't allow dyes and chemicals in many places. So we have a lot more choices of what we call food. It's not really food. Um, than we really need, first of all, because we allow so much processing in the foods. Once again, it's real. I'm not sure today I'm going to change the world on that, but I can change your world on that. And it's really easy to change your world because all you have to do is stay away from the bad stuff. Nobody is forcing you to do things that are toxic to your body. You do that willingly. But the big question I get is, Dr. Joe, how come nobody else talks about this? Well, I don't know. That's why you're here. Glad to be that source of information for you. A lot of evidence showing that fertilizers, other agri agricultural chemicals are the leading source, source of environmental pollution. So again, I'm not a, you know, save the world, save the planet, pollution type guy, but I am worried about what it's doing to the body and what it's doing to you. Because if you destroy the environment, you know, you've got no place to live. And I, I heard a great line, I haven't thought about this in years. Um, when I was going to, you know, chiropractic school, they said, uh, you can tell your patients, if your body wears out, where are you going to live? I thought, that's a really good line. i got to remember to put that back in my – talk to my patients again. So you really want to take care of yourself. And it's sad because a friend of mine's brother-in-law, um, he vapes and he drinks constantly. And he's – I don't even know if he's 50 yet. But skin cancer on his nose is so bad that they'd have to remove his nose to get all the cancer. So they're using radiation on it to see if he can get it. And now they're finding other spots throughout his body with cancer. So that's kind of sad. And I have patients come in all the time, and they have cancer, and they have kidney failure. I'm going to talk about kidney failure in a little bit if I have time. When I first got in practice, I never saw a kidney failure patient, ever. I mean, probably 20 years I didn't see a kidney failure patient. Now I see three or four a week. A week? We're chiropractic and nutrition center. 
why would somebody with kidney failure come to us? They go to a, you know, a, 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 a kidney doctor. But what's happening is a lot of the toxic chemicals that we're putting in our bodies, I believe, are leading to this. And that's what the studies show as well. So, yeah, it's a problem. Now, the good news is that there are certain things we can do to hopefully slow down that process of kidney failure. We've had several people reverse it somewhat. No one's ever gotten totally well. I had one patient with 22% kidney function. She's up to 52%. So we can make good progress. She's still alive. She's thriving. She'll live a long life. But she basically told me when she came in, she goes, I'm going to die. Doctors can't do anything for me. I'm just waiting for uh, um, dialysis. And that's basically, that's a death sentence. Once it starts, unless you do something, it, the game's over. And now she's doing great. So not saying we cured her kidney failure, but she understood what she, she understood what she did. She did a lot of animal products. She did a lot of chemicals. And it just ate away at the kidneys. So stop it. So the chemicals that we're putting in our food are avoidable. And it's different levels. I mean, I'm sure I get chemicals in my body. I'm sure if I got tested, I'd have plastics in my body. I'd have glyphosate in my body um, because I'm exposed to it but at a much lower level than most people. So just be careful about what you're putting in your body. I want to talk about glyphosate. I'm probably going to circle back to this one because this is a big one. If you're just tuning in, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking about why is the food supply so messed up? Why is our food supply so dangerous? Why is our food supply, which should be nourishing us, many times leading to certain illnesses and diseases? I don't understand. Well, it's a, of course I understand it. It's business. But you don't have to be part of it. That's the nice part about this. I want to talk about glyphosate because I talk about this a lot. It's identified as a probable human carcinogen by the International Agency on Research of Cancer all the way back in 2015. So this is not new. And you might have seen commercials uh, with lawyers saying, you know, hey, if you've been exposed to glyphosate, you may have a substantial compensation coming to you. Um, yeah, it's pretty clear that it's not good. Is it still being used? Absolutely. Have you been exposed to it probably today? Probably. It's ubiquitous. And so it's everywhere. It's in our food. It's in our lawn care services. I mean, I worry about these guys who do landscaping that spray all these chemicals on lawns. If you haven't sprayed it on your lawn, that's bad enough. But these guys that spray it all day, every day. I was thinking about this the other day. I was driving, and they're repaving the road outside my subdivision. And the smell of tar and the smell of, uh, we called it macadam, uh, asphalt, um, was pretty intense. And I thought, I can get away from this in a half hour. These guys who drive behind these trucks, not a good idea. Years ago, I used to do uh, a lot of construction work. And one of the things I did was hot tar on roofs. So we'd have a, it's pretty archaic back then, you'd have a torch, you know, and you'd put a, a pan, throw the pieces of tar in it, let it melt, and then you'd pour it on top of the roof. Very slow process. But I remember the smell of hot tar. And just all day sitting on the roof, just inhaling hot tar. Very toxic to my body. And I grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in a place called the Cancer Belt. Isn't that a fun place to live? Because so many people got cancer. And it turns out we had a lot of chemical factories right around where I lived. And many of them were right in the, in the, in the residential neighborhoods. There was no zoning when this started back then. I think my town was founded in the 1800s. So they put a chemical factory in a couple of houses, another chemical factory, they dump it into the water. And so, yeah, a lot of people got cancer where I grew up, and a lot of people died from it. Luckily, I got away. I didn't get it. But a lot of it has to do with the environmental toxins. So glyphosate, back to glyphosate. It's weed killer. Chances are if you've sprayed weeds in your backyard, you've sprayed glyphosate. You have it in your house, probably in your garage. If I looked right now, a lot of you would have it there. Glyphosate increases the risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, group of blood cancers by 41%, those, those people that are highly exposed. So we know there's a risk. Why do we still use it? It works. It's probably the best weed killer out there if, if your goal is to kill weeds. I don't think if anything works as good. You spray a little bit on it and come back a couple of days later, and man, you know, it's, it's, it's the scorched earth. It's, everything is brown and dead. Let's talk about what it does. More than 70% of hum Americans have detectable levels of glyph glyphosate in their body. So if we did blood samples, that's what we're going to find. But it can trigger DNA damage. Now, what DNA is, is you have a cell, and inside the cell is called the DNA, di uh, dioxyribonucleic acid. And the DNA is the blueprint of who you are. Depending on how your, how your DNA is laid out, it's going to determine everything about your body. 
uh, the color of your eyes, your hair, your, your height, your weight, if you gain weight easily, are you more pr- prone to heart disease? So it's a very, very common uh, situation when we see DNA damage that it can lead to problems. And what cancer is, cancer is when the cell starts to replicate, but it doesn't make a good, healthy cell. It makes a weaker version of itself. And those weak cells can't do the job. And also, can- cells have a, a, a life expectancy. And they have coded into their DNA something called apoptosis. That's a cool word. If you've never heard it before, it's a cool word. You can use it. Apoptosis is determining when the cell creates suicide, when the cell dies. So a cell is born, does its job, and dies, just like we do. But your cells are on a shorter life path, so you can generate new cells. If a cell doesn't die when it's supposed to, that cell now becomes a malfunctioning or dysfunctioning cell, and that's where many times we get that cancerous growth to come from. So it can damage the DNA. It can cause pineal gland damage. It's glyphosate, weed killer. Pineal gland is linked to something called gut dysbiosis and neurological issues like autism, depression, dementia, uh, anxiety, Parkinson's. So all these things can be linked to it. Not saying it's the cause, but certainly can exacerbate the situation. So when it comes to health, I'm going to come back to this in a second. I've got to go off on a tangent here. When it comes to health, there's three things I want you to consider. You want to have a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. This is a little protocol I've put together for a very simple way for you to determine what you can do, what you can take responsibility for to get your health the best it can be. So the nervous system controls everything. And we know things like glyphosate can affect the nervous system. So your brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. So right now, your brain is telling your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, your eyes to see, your prostate to make fluid. I mean, it's, doing, it's telling your body to, to do its job. That's why we're alive. And if we damage the DNA, the cells can't do the job that the brain is telling it to do. Or what if we damage the brain? The brain can't tell the body how to do its job. Pretty serious stuff. So we want to look at the chemical function of the nervous system. That's where a good diet comes in. And we have to look at the physical aspects that can affect your nervous system. Every single day for the past almost 40 years that I've seen patients, I see a patient that has a structural issue that's never been addressed. Had a lady come in the other day, bilateral hip replacement, both hips replaced. And when I took x-rays on her, hips are all crooked. So when they did the hip replacement, she didn't line up everything properly. Now, I'm not blaming the surgeons. It's impossible to do that because you're not weight-bearing in the surgery. You're laying down, you stand up, things shift. And I said, has anybody ever told you why your hips wore out? She said, no. One wore out, then the other one wore out. They just told me it was going to happen. When joints wear out, it's almost always a mechanical component. The bones are out of place, rubbing up against each other. If the tires on my car wear out, they're out of alignment, rubbing up against each other. So we have to look at structure. If you have osteoarthritis, there's a mechanical component. Something's out of alignment, 100% of the time. I've never seen it any other way. Osteoarthritis is mechanical. Rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disease. So if you have a bone out of place, whether it's your foot, your knee, your hip, your ankle, your spine, I guarantee you, the only promise I'll ever make you in my career, I guarantee you the joints are going to wear out. And when the joints wear out, we start to pinch the nerves. And when you pinch a nerve, it hurts. So if it hurts, if you have pain, put the bone back in place. Had a patient the other day, three cortisone shots, around the cortisone uh, medication on several painkillers. I said, did they ever mention that the bone is probably out of place? Well, no. Okay, so I did an x-ray, did an exam. Sure enough, his bones are out of place. And he looked at me, he was a little angry. He said, why did I spend so much money and so much time going to all these different doctors and nobody ever told me to put the bone back in place? And my answer is, I don't know. So if you have pain, come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. I want to be your doctor. Let's do a structural evaluation and determine what needs to be put back in place. Then we do a nutrition evaluation. We make sure the food is right. So you have the nutrients so the body can heal. And then we make sure you're digesting your food. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, your stomach could be pushed up against your diaphragm. And the nice part is we have a very simple adjustment that we can do to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. It may take several times to do it. So we want to fix the nervous system, digestive system, and your diet. How's that for a healthcare plan? Bet you never heard that before. 
So if you want to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoe.com. Normally, the first visit is $940. For you, my listeners, I've reduced that to $299. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. You can't get that at any price anywhere else that I know of. So I want to be your doctor. Then after that, if you need more care, we'll talk about it. We'll discuss options for you. Because if you have health issues, you want to fix them as quickly as possible. Stop suffering needlessly. DrJoe.com. Oh, by the way, if you're ever in a car accident, you are hurt. If the car's damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen it any other way. You need to come see us right away. You will get calls from lawyers and doctors. It's a scam. It's illegal. It's a felony. No one can reach out to you and contact you if you're in an accident. It's illegal. Don't fall for those scammers. If you need a doctor, either us or someone we can refer you to, drjoe.com. All right, so we're talking today about why is our food supply so messed up. And we started talking about glyphosate, which is weed killer. Uh, It can affect the pineal gland, which can affect a lot of things, dementia, anxiety. It can create gut dysbiosis, which means it can affect the the bacteria in your colon. Because one of the things that glyphosate does is it acts like an antibiotic. It kills bacteria, good bacteria as well as bad. It can affect the pituitary gland, and that affects the thyroid, which can lead to hypothyroidism. It can act as a substitute for glycine. So glycine is an amino acid, and instead of having glycine, this kind of glyphosate jumps in there, and now the cell is trying to build structure around uh, all the amino acids, including glycine, and it's not there. And you need glycine to help suppress inflammation as well. So if you have inflammation, it can make it worse. It can bind to minerals. It can bind to iron, cobalt, manganese. Manganese deficiency, in turn, impairs the mitochondria, and that can lead to glutamic toxicity in the brain. So what does that mean? The mitochondria produces energy in your cells. It's a little powerhouse in your cell. So if you don't have enough manganese, it can't make the the mitochondria work, so it can't pump out glutamate. And the toxic levels of glutamic acid or glutamate uh, are what's called a neurotoxin. It can destroy the nervous system. So I know that's a little complicated chemistry there, but, ba- but basically it's binding to a lot of nutrients so you can't absorb them, and then it passes out through the body. It can impair serotonin, serotonin transport and kill, like I said, the good bacteria, and that can affect mood swings, including major depression. So serotonin is a neurotransmitter in your brain that makes you happy. Serotonin becomes melatonin, which helps you sleep. And this is why I've, when I see patients that have been exposed to a lot of glyphosate, many times they have sleep issues. And that's exactly why. It affects the serotonin production. Serotonin affects the melatonin production. And then you can't sleep. And if you can't sleep, you can't heal. And that becomes a problem too. And it can interfere with something called cytochrome P450. Those are enzymes, and they inhibit vitamin D activation. And, they, it, it, and that it also affects the creation of nitric oxide and cholesterol sulfate. And cholesterol sulfate is needed for red blood cell function. So again, it's a lot of chemistry there. But nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. And so I take a nitric oxide supplement every day. Because as I get older, I don't produce nitric oxide like I used to. So nitric oxide increases circulation to your heart, your lungs, your liver, your spleen, your sex organs. Uh, your brain gives you lots of energy, clear thought. I love my nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is my third favorite supplement. My top two supplements are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. I take a scoop of each. Somebody asked me the other day, why are they powders? Because I want to give you as much as I possibly can for the least amount of money. If I put it in pills and I checked into it, can I put it in pills? Yes. You'd have to take a handful of each and it would be extremely expensive. So to keep the cost down, we leave it as a powder form. And this way you get way more bang for your buck. There's a lot of pills out there that are pills um, that may be fruits and vegetables in a pill form. You're not getting nearly the bang for your buck, not even close. So I think about you and me as a consumer. How can I make it the best quality product at the best price? So Super Green is an essential source. That's the minimum supplements I think everybody should be taking. So if you're not willing to do anything else, at least do Super Green is an essential source. They're on the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com in the store section. Nitric oxide, don't take it if you have low blood pressure. But if you have normal or high blood pressure, it's pretty amazing. So drjoe.com, you can pick them up there. And if you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. I'm happy to answer your questions for you. Because I know health is confusing. I learn every single day. I've been studying for 40 years, almost every day, and I learn something new every day. 
So if you have questions, drjoe.com, send me a question through the website. Happy to answer it for you. Supplements on the website. The best thing you can do is make an appointment in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, or we can do a virtual meeting with you. Uh, just go to the website, set up an appointment with us. But most of you are suffering needlessly, and there's absolutely no need for it. So if we can get to the cause of your problems and not treat the symptoms, that's the protocol that we do in our offices. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. All right. You got questions for me? I've heard that even if oatmeal says organic and GMO, it can still be sprayed at the end to help with the drying process. I don't know that for a fact. Um, the safest thing you can do is get organic, okay? Um, that's the best I can give you. I don't know that. If other companies are doing it, I'm not aware of that. So. I've heard that the chemical content on even organic foods and vegetables is still quite high. So is there anything that I can do? Yes, wash it very, very thoroughly. Like I said, if you're going to eat the skin, it's got to be organic. I wash everything. I wash everything with soap and water and a sponge, um, no matter what it is. I mean, I wash everything down. Now, lettuce and stuff, I don't. But you can use a little bit of apple cider vinegar, maybe a half a you know, quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Uh, they have vegetable washes, and they do seem to take off some of the chemicals. Uh, and that's what I do. I use either a vegetable washer or apple cider vinegar whenever I wash anything. So. Does the shell on coffee beans help protect it against some chemicals? The shell on coffee beans. Um, coffee beans is one of the most highly sprayed chemicals there is. So if the shell is removed, there's still going to be chemicals in there. It's like uh, when they kill animals and the fecal matter gets into the other meat because when they kill the animal, it just kind of spreads everywhere. So if you're going to do coffee, I recommend organic only, which is a lot less pesticides, but I don't recommend you do coffee. But if you do it, I recommend organic only. So That is all. Garrett, ready for part two? Okay, here we go. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you stayed with us, thank you. What we're talking about today is we're discussing why our food supply is so messed up. Why is our food supply so dangerous? Because we have levels of toxicity in our food, and they're small amounts, but they're cumulative. They build up over time. And assuming we're eating three meals a day or more, so these toxic chemicals can build up in our body. Now, we're all going to get exposed to chemicals no matter what, even if you're eating organically grown food because it's in the air. Um, people touch it at the grocery store. I pick up a non-organic melon, and then I pick up an organic melon, put the organic melon back. I mean, there's ways to transfer these things. But I want to talk about now how to safeguard your diet. Let's talk about some good stuff for a while. Uh, earlier, we talked about something called phosphate fertilizers. Those are dangerous. Uh, human waste, it's funny. They call it biosolids. That's a fancy word of saying biosolids are used as uh, fertilizer, and that's probably the most toxic one of all. Uh, biosolids have something called PFAs in it, uh, uh, polyfluoroalkyl substances, and that's associated with increased risk of cancer, can damage the organs like the liver and the thyroid, and it can be absorbed by the crops in, uh, that are grown in soils that are treated with human sludge. It's when you flush your toilet. Let's call it what it is. So phosphate fertilizers, biosolids, glyphosate was a weed killer that we use. Um, there's just three different sources of way to get toxins into your diet. Now, once you begin uh, to look at how, how many different ways there are to get into the system, you really want to start saying, wow, I really need to wash my fruits and vegetables. And what, what I'm eating, I say I wash it with, uh, I've got a non-toxic dish soap that I use, an all-natural one, and I just squirt it on my foods, and I take my sponge, and I wash everything down, and then I proceed. Now, if it's a lettuce or something like that, I'll use uh, maybe a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, maybe a half gallon or gallon of water. It doesn't have to be exact, and I'll wash it with that. There are vegetable washes that you can buy, and studies show that they do remove a lot of waste product and toxins off the food too, so you can do that as well. That's what I do. We're starting to realize that a lot of problems associated with conventional farming, health and environmental, um, are an issue, and a lot more people are becoming proactive. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and protest. You don't have to have a sign and stand outside the chicken slaughtering plant. But you can make a decision. A very good friend of mine, you know who he is, I won't say his name, always says, vote with your wallet. And that changed my life when I heard him say that. He said, vote with your wallet. If you don't like a restaurant, don't go there. You can go tattle on it if you want to and spend, you know, write an 18-page uh, thesis on asparagus or whatever it is. Or you can just say, I'm not going to go there anymore. 
I'm not going to buy the foods that are bad for me. It's just that simple. Vote with your wallet. And that's going to make the biggest change. Because in any business, if, if they notice that people aren't coming, they're going to say, why are people not coming here anymore? Oh, now I have to change it. Or not. Nice part about uh, you know, capitalism is you can decide not to do it if you want to. But smart business says I have to I have a fiduciary responsibility to my, let's say, investors or my family or whatever it is, that I have to do a good job here. And then they'll change it. So the best way to make a change is very simply, don't buy it. So we're realizing environmental problems, health problems. Logical step is to transition to either organic or biodynamic food to whatever degree you're able. If you're not able, it's still better to eat a non-organic apple than it is to eat a hamburger. Because you've got to realize these animals, what are they fed? I'm going to talk about that in a second. But they're fed so much junk. Conventional cattle or, or pork or chicken are fed an unnatural diet of grains, corn, soybeans. Uh, they're not designed to eat that. Cows are designed to eat grass. Chickens are designed to eat bugs and, and, and seeds. And we start feeding them genetically modified corn and soy that's been sprayed with glyphosate. That gets into their fat, in their, in their tissue. You then eat it. So animal products can actually be more contaminated than fruits and vegetables. So a non-organic apple is way better than a chicken sandwich. In fact, one of the big um, chicken chains just announced uh, recently that they always said, we'll never serve anything with antibiotics. Well, they're having trouble getting enough chicken that ha don't have antibiotics in it. There's just not enough out there. So they said they're going to start using chickens that are not fed antibiotics that might be used on humans. So that doesn't mean the ones that are not being used on humans are safe. So, I mean, I understand their point. They're a business, and they have to get enough product, and they can't find enough product. But you, as the consumer, don't have to buy the product. That's the nice part about all this. You make a decision. So as we transition over to you know, whatever we can— uh, but meat and dairy is actually going to be one of the worst. So my rule is this. If you're going to eat animal products, meat, butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice cream, I'm going to recommend organic only. That's one of the things that needs to be organic. Or the other option you have, don't eat it. That's a better option. Because once again, you get to vote with your wallet when it comes to your health. So organic or don't eat it. That's my rule on any animal product whatsoever. Same thing with coffee. Because those are the ones that are so highly concentrated. So you're freaking out over an apple. That's the least of your concerns. It's not good, but it's the least of your concerns when it comes to coffee and animal products. Organic only or don't eat it. So I'll negotiate with you. I'll, I'll, I'll cut you a deal. And the deal is very simple. Only eat the foods that are good for you and don't eat the foods that are bad for you. Now, I want to talk about another chemical that's in our environment that's affecting us. It's called BPA, bisphenol A. I haven't talked about this in a long time. It's kind of a new chemical, and there's approximately 12,000 new substances, chemicals, that are added uh, to our environment pretty much on a, on a regular basis. Okay, a yearly basis. I've seen some places a daily basis, but I don't think that. We may be exposed to 12,000 chemicals a day, but we're adding new chemicals all the time. Now, there isn't data available on the hazards on some of these chemicals in high volumes. And there's no way to do the math that says, what if I mix 20 of these chemicals? What happens? What if I mix 18 of these and two of these? What happens? So we don't know. We might know about one chemical, but not about the interaction. Same thing with medications. Same thing with other things. When it comes to drugs, we don't know what's going to happen if we mix you know, so, uh, drug A, C, D, and L to see what happens. <clears throat> so bisphenol A, one of the highest volume chemicals with billions of pounds being produced every single year. Now, studies were raised concerns about the possibility of reproductive disorders, cardiovascular diseases, birth defects, chronic respiratory diseases, kidney diseases, breast cancer. It's a lot. BPA rapidly is becoming one of the most produced and used chemicals worldwide, even though it's been recognized as what's called a synthetic estrogen. Estrogen in the body is a growth hormone. We all have it. When you start putting synthetic estrogens in the body, they're usually stronger than human estrogen. It's called endocrine-disrupting hormones. And it can block up your estrogen receptor sites so you can't absorb the real estrogen. 
So that becomes a real big issue. And bisphenol A is everywhere. About a billion pounds, like I said, are used in, in, uh, in the lining of food and, and beverage cans, especially for tuna and condensed soups. So what we do is, and I'll tell you a little story. I used to work at a pizza place uh, when I first got out of college. Um, I would deliver pizza at night and had an office during the day, hopefully seeing patients. Well, I didn't have a lot of patients at the time. So I always said I was the most educated pizza deliverer in all of Georgia. And I delivered pizza for about a year just to make enough money to pay my rent. And he used to have the big cans of sauce, and we'd dump it out. You know, when we turned it upside down, we had this big uh, spatula. It was really you know, like the size of your head. And you'd scrape out the can because there was enough pizza sauce in the can for about one or two more pizzas. So you don't want to just dump it out and throw the can away. You had all this sauce in there. But bisphenol A came along, and bisphenol A uh, is a nonstick coating. And so when you line cans with bisphenol A, things slide out easier. You may have noticed that. If you think about when you were a kid, you had to scrape the can, and now things slide out. Why is that? Usually bisphenol A. And it's highly toxic. So I try not to use canned foods, and if you can, try to do organic because they're less likely to use bisphenol A. But a food can still be called organic and have bisphenol A in it because it's not the food, it's the can. But then the can leaches into the food. The United States general population gets less than 1,000 times lower um, the safety limit, yet even those incredible low doses, now again, the safety limit, we're in a thousand times less than the safety limit, can affect thyroid, weight control, blood sugar, cardiovascular disease, liver function, and exposure to BPA at concentrations thousands of times lower than what's called the tolerable daily amount uh, indicates that the safe exposure to BPA uh, should be much lower than what it is because we're getting a thousand times less and we're still having effects on our health. And the problem is it's everywhere. Where do you get it? In cans. How about cash register receipts? You go, you pay with a credit card. They give you a receipt. You get a credit, you get a receipt from the, from the cash register. If you work in an industry that has cash register receipts, I strongly advise you either wear gloves or wash your hands frequently. And men, it's even worse because it's an estrogen-like compound, which can affect your testosterone levels. So I try not to take receipts if I can avoid them. And if I have to get a receipt, I take it, I put it in my wallet, and then I wash my hands afterwards. I do the same thing with money. Whenever I touch money, I wash my hands because it's really dirty. God knows where that stuff has been. The world art, uh, there's an organization devoted to research on hormones, and they concluded that even infinitesimally low levels of exposure um, or hardly any exposure at all can be a problem. And it's estimated that BPA and childhood obesity and heart disease alone is a certain, certainly a health issue. There are alternatives that the industry can use. The problem is that they cost about two cents more for the receipts. So most of the receipts you're touching, bisphenol A. Lined cans, bisphenol A. Nonstick uh, coated uh, cookware, bisphenol A. So this is how you want to avoid this stuff. Avoid plastic containers. I have glass containers for everything I store. Now, I have two uh, plastic containers in my house. If I have to store something that I'm not going to cook or I'm not going to freeze, let's assume I'm putting, I don't know, avocados in the refrigerator. I need a container. I might put it in a plastic container. But if you freeze something in plastic, it's gonna, when it freezes and expands, it's going to scratch the container walls. And that becomes an issue as well. Uh, you want to avoid even menstrual products. Look for something that says BPA free. Because, ladies, you're putting this right onto a, a, a mucous membrane and can be easily absorbed into the body. Uh, thermal receipts, we talked about that. Even CDs and DVDs. I know we don't play with those a lot anymore, but those are slick. They have the chemicals on it. And uh, household electronic cords. Okay, your charger for your phone. They're smooth. Why are they smooth? bisphenol A. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're talking about today is we're talking about why our food sources are so messed up. Why is our food sources so toxic? Because I've been in practice a long time, and I'm seeing more and more patients getting sicker and sicker, younger and younger. And I'm scared. I'm scared because a lot of it is environmental. And unfortunately, and I sound like the old man now, the younger generation is not paying attention to this. Some are. Some are getting excited about it. They're turning more to a plant-based diet. They're getting better. But a lot of the younger kids are ordering food out. 
this is a trend um, that you see all the time. You see the Uber Eats and the, uh, the other ones, uh, Post whatever, and delivering food. And talking to younger kids, what I find is they say it's just basically a cost of living. I have to get my food delivered, and then I have to add a service charge, then I have to get a tip. And the problem when they deliver food is the many times they put it in styrofoam containers, plastic containers, hot soup in a plastic container. It's melting the plastic, and the plastic is getting into the food. We covered a couple of weeks ago how dangerous plastics can be. So I'm worried because it's expensive, uh, but it's also so toxic to, the, to, to these kids. So if you're going to have a cup of coffee, very acidic, very hot, you put it in a styrofoam container. What happens? Styrofoam melts a little bit into the coffee. You're getting your chemicals into your system. So the trend is going, and I'm happy to see this, the trend is going more toward people eating at home. And one of the driving forces on this is the cost, of course. It's so expensive. You used to be able to go to a restaurant, I remember, for, you know, a, not a fancy place for $10. Now it's $20. And I don't think my salary's gone up twice. Hasn't doubled my salary. So now I have to spend more money relative to how much I make just going out to dinner. So more people are cooking home, which is great. And the reason I say that is I'm seeing more and more interest in a book that I wrote a long time ago. And years ago, I wrote a book called Eating Right for the Health of It. And the whole book is telling you how to change your diet with over 200 recipes. And I'm seeing more and more interest, especially for the younger generation, on what can I do to save money and prepare my meals at home. And it's a whole lot cheaper because the food, just buying the food from the grocery store. And then you can decide, are you going to wash it? Are you going to clean it? Are you going to use uh, you know, apple cider vinegar and water in the wash to get the chemicals off it? So I'm happy to see this trend. It actually makes me pretty happy. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about why the food supply is so messed up. Why are things so toxic in our environment? And again, it's not an environmental lecture. It's about the environment inside your body. Another thing, we'll talk about fast foods. I'll keep going on this, this thought process is, is fast foods have something called linoleic acid. It's an omega-6 fatty acid. And these are the vegetable oils, corn seed, cotton seed, soy, uh, corn, uh, canola. These vegetable oils are very high in omega-6 fatty acids. And omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. And worse than that, you, your cell has a wall around it. It's called the lipoprotein layer. And lipo means fat, protein means protein. And it's a wall around your cell. And it's where you have these gateways for nutrients to get in and waste products to be passed out. And if you're building it with healthy oils, you have a good, strong lipoprotein layer around the cell, and the cell is able to absorb nutrients, pass out waste products, and hormones are able to connect onto the cell wall. It's like a docking station, and do their job, insulin being a hormone. As we get more linoleic acid in our diet, the cell doesn't have these good fats to build a wall around, so they start using these cheap fats. And they use the cheap fats, and now the docking stations aren't working as well as they used to. So hormones insulin being one of them, isn't able to dock into the cell and do its job like it used to. So now we start to see things like insulin resistant. The cell isn't able to open up and let glucose in because the insulin isn't able to attach to the cell and the cell opens up, insulin opens up the cell. And waste products are building up inside the cell and nutrients aren't able to get in. And also if you have a bad diet, you probably don't have enough nutrients anyway. So I want you to think about this when you eat out. I've never known anywhere I've ever been in my entire life that used a quality oil. They always use the cheap omega-6 fatty acid vegetable oils. Now, if you do it periodically, you have other oils in your diet, avocados, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, probably not that big a deal. But when you eat three meals a day with linoleic acid in it, it's affecting your health. And many times, fast foods are contaminated with medications. And in fact, one of the things that was interesting, 2023, Moms Across America did food samplings of 10 fast food chains. Uh, to, they submitted them to the Health uh, Research Institute. That's a nonprofit laboratory that checks for contaminants. So 10 samples of fast food. Each sample was tested for the presence of 104 of the most common veterinary drugs, that's animal drugs, and hormones. What they found was that most of them had problems. It wasn't all surprising because fast food chains rely on beef and chicken from concentrated animal feeding operations. 
where veterinary drugs are routinely used. So that's where it's coming from. You're getting the animals that are given veterinary drugs, and then you're eating them. And there's some drug residual there. So the way they raise these animals, it's usually close quarters, not very sanitary if you've ever seen it, high incidence of disease. So non-organic meat that's treated with antibiotic growth hormones, antiparasitic drugs, um, contraceptions are getting into the diet. Six of the 10 contained uh, risky antibiotics of the 10 that they tested. Uh, they found uh, a chicken sandwich was found to have an antiparasitic drug and a, what's called a foul contraception. It was contraception for chickens that can cause infertility in certain chickens um, and certain animals. And yet you're eating these chemicals. And they're giving these things to fatten them up. That's what's happening. You know, if women take birth control pills, many times they gain weight. So if we can give chickens birth control pills, they gain weight. And we sell chicken by the pound. And so the more fat, more weight we have on it, the better it is. Uh, then, uh, 2022, they tested 43 school lunches. 95% of the school lunches had detectable levels of glyphosate, which we just talked about. So let's talk about you putting together a health care plan for yourself. If that's something you're interested in, there's three things I want you to consider. Normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, good nutrition. So if you'd like to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, sciatica, digestive issues, nutritional concerns, I want to be your doctor. Let's get to the cause of the problem. Now, I am not against drugs. I am not against surgery. I am not against uh, dentistry. I want to be in conjunction with your other doctors, co-managing your cases so that hopefully we can get you well and keep you well. So if you have pain, again, chiropractic care, most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. That makes perfect sense to me. From a nutrition standpoint, let's look at what you're eating. Let's see if there's other options. If you go to my website, drjoe.com, just type in, so what can I eat? And listen to a lecture I did on what you could eat. It's pretty simple. It's not hard to do. And change whatever you can change, whatever you're willing to change. You don't have to do it all at once. Don't get scared. I'm not going to yell at you. But I want to give you the information, and you utilize that information however you see best fit. And if you want to make a little bit of change, do that. If you want to make a lot of change, do that. If you want to make any change, that's okay too. It's your life. Okay? Bon, John Bon Jovi song, It's Your Life. It's your life. You can decide what you want to do. But I want to give you the tools so that you now have information so you can make a better decision. Because it's all about you. And making the right decision. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Uh, you can go to my website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right now. Uh, we can do uh, remote consultations as well if you're not in the Atlanta area. Normally, the first visit is $940 for you guys, my listeners. I've, I'm only charging $299. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays on a follow-up visit. So you see what we see putting together a treatment plan for you, and a complete nutrition evaluation. At that point, if you want to go forward, great. If you don't want to go forward, that's okay too. I just want to give you the information so you can make a better choice. So again, the website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. If you have any questions, send it to me through the website, drjoe.com as well. Uh, follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, at Dr. Joe Esposito, at Dr. Joe Esposito, all one word. Uh, and I appreciate you doing that for me. Because I'm happy to give you information. I'm happy to answer questions for you. But I'm asking for a little bit in return. Follow me on social media. If you don't like it, unfollow me. Sign up for our newsletter. It's on the website, drjoe.com. That's the inner circle. That's where you're going to get the most information. Newsletter is free. Uh, we don't give out your address to anybody. If you want to un, you know, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. But think about this. If you do nothing regarding your health, what's going to change a week from now? a year from now, five years from now. If you do nothing, you're going to have the same problems, probably worse than you have right now. That's the only guarantee I can give you. So think about, is it worth taking a little time out of my day? Again, follow me on social media. We post health tips every single day. You're going to get health tips every day from me, absolutely free. Newsletter, in-depth health tips, absolutely free. So what's going to happen? What's going to change in your life if you do nothing? Nothing. It's only going to get worse. So take the positive step. You can always go back to eating bad. You can always go back to not getting chiropractic care. You can always go back to the life you have right now. And I always tell people, if, I, if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. 
You ate well for a while, save some money on food, and go back to what it used to be. Supplements. Minimum supplements I think everybody should be taking are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste great. I mix them together. We have a mint and a plain Super Greens. I like the mint. It's a little sweeter. If you don't like mint, get the plain. I mix it with a scoop of Essential Source, shake it up with some coconut milk, almond milk, water, mix it in with plant-based yogurt every single day. If you do nothing but that, you'll be amazed. If you change one thing in your diet, you should be amazed. If you get your body's checked out by us, you'll be amazed. So so, it's a menu, and you can choose whatever you want off this menu, but if it was me, I'd take the whole buffet. I want to get to the cause of my problems, not just treat the symptoms. So again, drjoe.com is my website. Send me questions. If you search my website, we have over 4,000 hours of content. So just type in the search bar what you're looking for. Happy to You'll come up with an article or a lecture that I gave, and then any questions from there, happy to answer them for you. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. We post at least two podcasts a week. Um, And if you're in the VA, if the VA refers you to us, they pay for your treatment. So, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. We'll talk to you next week. All right. What do you got? I've heard that an extended fast once a year can greatly reduce your chances of cancer. What are your thoughts? Yes. How's that for an easy answer? What else you got? What are the healthiest types of noodles? Uh, If you're going to do noodles, I'm going to recommend something like a uh, 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 lentil. Uh, Lentil noodles, uh, split pea lentils are okay. Chickpeas are okay. They don't taste like wheat. Don't, don't, don't get your, your, your panties in a wad there. Um, but those are going to be the healthiest kind. Uh, at least do gluten-free. And if you're going to do gluten, please make sure it's organic or at least from Europe because they don't use the glyphosate there. So. But, yeah, uh, bean noodles are going to be the best. What else? Are the smaller red potatoes healthier than the larger potatoes? Yes. The darker the color, the more nutrients they have. Purple is going to be your best bet. And, again, if you can do potatoes, make sure they're organic. That is all. That's it. All right, guys, thank you for being here. I appreciate that very much. Please follow me on all platforms at Dr. Joe Esposito, and we'll see you uh, maybe next week.